All right, good afternoon. We uh, appreciate everybody coming out today for this uh, special, special moment for uh, Gopher basketball, and it's nice to see so many familiar faces and supporters. And uh, as I open up my remarks, I want to make sure I give uh, some thanks to a lot of people that made this day possible and to make this day happen. And first off, I want to thank our student athletes. Uh, I see some of them spread throughout the, uh, the crowd. When we uh, had this announcement almost two weeks ago, uh, we talked about how everybody was going to focus on our program and how we would respond and I'm so proud of our student athletes and how you've reacted the past couple of weeks. So thank you for your leadership and how you responded. Phenomenal. I would also like to uh, thank the staff. You know, we, we have over 200 full-time staff that work in our athletic department. And I hope all of you know how much I appreciate to work closely with you each day and to impact our student athletes and our coaches. And I hope you know how much I appreciate the text messages you send me when you go through these searches. Uh, it means a lot, and I'm really thankful for your hard work and what you do for our program. Uh, I would also like to thank President Gable and our board leadership. Uh, we have great, great alignment right now on our campus, and President Gable has actually been traveling, and for her to be involved in the search process was phenomenal. So I'm really grateful for her leadership and for board leadership and their guidance as we worked our way through this process. I would also like to thank the search committee, and I'd like to name those individuals because this committee, as you all know and as our search committee knows, I like to move quickly when we have openings because I have great empathy for our student athletes as they go through a transition. And this group did a wonderful job interviewing all of our candidates, and I'm really grateful for your time and your work. So I'd like to thank our two faculty athletic reps, uh, Francis Holmans and Don Dangle. Uh, I'd like to thank Dusty Clements, Peyton Owens, Joy Thomas, our sport administrator, uh, Jenny Yalen, uh, Jeremiah Carter, uh, Stephanie Davis, uh, Hugh McCutcheon played a big role in this, so I thank Hugh for his work. And I want to give a shout out to Julie Manning back there, who's done a wonderful job as the chair of that search committee. So thank all of you for your work on that. And as we get ready to bring Dawn uh, up here to speak to you, I want to make sure I thank her family. I know, uh, Jay, you're here. I had a chance to spend some time with Lexi yesterday, and I can't wait to meet AJ. Uh, but I appreciate everything you do, Jay, and for, for your commitment to come to Minnesota, for believing in us and coming here. I know that's not easy when you go through transition and change, but we're excited to have you here and Lexi and AJ when they get here. And now we're going to turn our attention to Dawn. Uh, and I cannot tell you how excited we are uh, to welcome her here to Minnesota. Uh, when we started this process, uh, we told our student athletes that we have a lot of interest in this job because of our student athletes and what we have in place here at Minnesota. Uh, when you look at our facilities, when you look at our academic success or athletic success, uh, being in the Big Ten Conference sends a strong message, and we are absolutely thrilled uh, with the final candidate and who we have here who's going to lead our women's program to great, great heights. So please join me in welcoming Coach Don Plitzewite. That's obviously not going to work. Okay, let's keep it there. First and foremost, I would like to thank President Joan Gable, Mark Coyle, Julie Manning, and all those involved in the decision to allow me to be the next coach at the University of Minnesota. I'm extremely humbled and honored to be here today. This is an incredible opportunity to build something special together. I'd like to thank my family, my husband Jay, who Mark mentioned is here today, our two kids, AJ and Lexi, who are both in class at their respective universities. Uh, my parents, Harold and Mary, who are not able to be here today, but I'm sure are tuned in either online or on the Big Ten Network. And our family who is able to make it here today. My sister Brenda, her husband Tom, Anna and Elizabeth Trzinski, Jay's parents, Gerald and Lois, his brother Dan, Becky, Ava and Eliza Plitzewhite. I'd also like to thank uh, a very dear friend, Brian Stanchek, who's been a great mentor, a resource for me for many years, and I'm thankful he's able to make it. Thank you to Coach Whalen and to her staff for what they've done for Gopher Women's Basketball. I have a tremendous amount of respect for Lindsay as a player, as a coach, and most importantly, as a person. Lindsay is one of our own, and I look forward to honoring her and all of our alumni 
and coaches who have come before us and who have laid the foundation upon which we want to build. I'd love to say thank you personally to so many people who have helped guide and mentor me throughout my career, but that list is really long. So I'm gonna say thank you publicly to all of them and then privately, as time goes on, thank them personally later. But today is not about me. Today is about Minnesota women's basketball. The most important people in this room are the young ladies sitting in front of us. I had the opportunity to spend some time with them on Saturday evening, and I came up with a few words that I would use to characterize my impressions of them so far. You guys ready? Energetic. There are some great personalities within this group. Hungry. You can just feel their desire to grow and to develop. Competitive. These young ladies have won at a high level in their high school and AAU, and you know what? Winners win. Close-knit. You can tell there's a lot of caring for each other and love for each other, and when you're around them, when you're with them, you just feel that. So then the question becomes, how do we build and how do we grow and how do we develop together? For us, it comes down to three building blocks within our program. Those building blocks are toughness, togetherness, and find a way. Toughness, it takes a great amount of toughness to be a great player and to be a great team in the Big Ten. But what does toughness look like? Well, it can be characterized as being good defensively or rebounding or taking charges or getting on the floor. But for us, it will also mean doing the little things really well, sharing the basketball, taking care of the basketball, making simple passes, reading what the defense is giving us. The second building block for us will be our togetherness. Our togetherness is our connectivity, our chemistry, our synergy, and our love for each other. We will be intentional in continuing to grow this each and every day. We have some young ladies on our roster who go to school relatively close to home. We have some young ladies who are going to be halfway across the world. So it's important for us to build a family atmosphere, a close-knit group, a group that takes care of each other. Our third building block is a mindset of find a way. Things do not always go as you anticipate that they will, but our goal is still to accomplish the task at hand, and so there are times that we will simply need to find a way to get it done. Our Gopher women's basketball program over time has celebrated some incredible players, some incredible teams, and has had some incredible runs. Our program has great energy about it, and we can't wait to build upon that. Plus, our program is very fortunate to have a tremendous recruiting base right here in our state and in our region. Personally, I've been blessed to recruit and coach in this area for many of my years as a college coach, and I'm really excited to connect or reconnect with a lot of the coaches and players who are in this area. To our Gopher fan base, we need you. Your support is gonna be critical for us building the program into what we all believe that it can be. We need you in the barn. We need you providing our young ladies with the energy and enthusiasm that it takes to find a way. On top of helping us, we believe you're gonna have a lot of fun too. Again, I'm very grateful for this opportunity to be here today. I look forward to growing together and I thank all of you for coming out and supporting. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Hi, Don. Pat Borzi with uh, MinPulse.com. Why did you decide to come back to the Midwest? Right, good question. You know, why? Why Minnesota? Why here? Why now? Um, timing, couldn't control the timing of it. Certainly not something we planned on in any way. But why Minnesota? And I think that's a great question. I think it's, you look at our academic reputation, our institution, and we, are, we have something that's really special. We have an opportunity to play in the Big Ten, the best conference in the country. We have an opportunity here 
to do something and recruit young ladies in our in our backyard to build this that are, are that they have an opportunity to stay close to home our fans have an opportunity to watch them grow throughout their high school careers and then into their college careers we have a fan base here that that loves women's basketball there's a, a lot that's really really special about that look at the big 10 tournament in the crowds that we had right down the road so certainly excited about that and for me personally it's an opportunity to come home Hi, Jim Suhan, Minneapolis Star Tribune. This program hasn't won big since the Whalen era. What do you think the ceiling on the program is? What, what's realistic expectation here? Yeah, I think that's a, it's a great question, but I'm not gonna answer that the way you want an answer, just so you know that, because I'm, I'm a very process-driven person. And so we'll have expectations, we'll have building blocks, we'll have ways that we want to do things every day, and then we let the process take care of the results. And so you know, what, what have I noticed out of our young ladies? Again, they're competitive, they're hungry. They're in the gym today. They want to do some special things. And so with that being the case, good things can happen for us. Hey, Ann Blood from the Minneapolis Star Tribune. Um, you're walking in here, and because so many of these kids decided to stay, you're not walking into an empty cupboard kind of situation. Can you just talk about, you know, the commitment that they made to, to see this through, and, 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 what, and how close do you think this roster, as it sits right now, can, is to being competitive in this conference? Well, first of all, uh, they're incredible young ladies, and I think what's really special about them is that they have chosen to come to the U to represent themselves, their families, our program, you know, athletic department, but the entire state of Minnesota in a lot of ways. There's a lot of, you can feel it when you're around them. And that, that makes this really, really special. And, and can we, what can we do? We're going to compete. Our first workout is tomorrow. We're going to compete in our first workout. And I know that they're excited about that. And what does that, what does that grow into? Well, only, that, that's the future. We don't know that yet. We're a precious present kind of team. We're going to live in the here and now. But I do believe that we have some young ladies who have proven that they can play at a very high level. You know, and now we've got to continue to just get better every day and see where that leads us, but we're really excited about it. Charles Holman, Minnesota Spokesman Recorder. I have two questions. One is that you just left a school that you were there for one year. What assurance are you going to give the players here that you're what? not going to leave if you get a better job? And two, you had two black assistants on your staff. Are you bringing them along? And if not, are you going to be adding diversity onto your staff? Okay, if I forget the first second, first second one, help me out. But the first question is, you know, it left after a year, and and yes, that that is it's hard. It was it was really challenging for for me for our family to make that decision because it's it's hard on these student athletes. They're going through a transition. This is something that they didn't sign up for when they decided to come to the University of Minnesota, this wasn't something that they had in mind. So, it, and it certainly wasn't something that our kids at, at West Virginia did either. It's something that's really challenging. At the same time, this, I, we, I can't control the timing of this. This is really challenging, but this is home. This is home for them. We're gonna make it a great family atmosphere for them. It's home for me. This is an opportunity I've had a chance to coach in, in the Big Ten before, never as a head coach, but this is a dream opportunity and one that I'm really excited about. Second question was about staffing, and we're in the middle of that. I think this is officially my second day on the job, and we're working pretty diligently, very quickly on that, because again, this is all about people. We're really fortunate to have great people in our program. We're gonna recruit great young ladies into our program, but we're also going to recruit a, a staff that not only can help teach and develop on the court, but a staff that does a good job of teaching and developing off the court. That's just as important, and has a lot of fun doing it. Our staff, has a great deal of, of synergy, uh, and we've had that, and so that's really important. And whether, you know, and how we build it here, it is important that we have diversity on our staff. It's important that we have people who are going to challenge me, even though I don't always love that, not gonna lie about that, but they challenge me in ways to consider different things, to grow and, and continue to get better all the time. And so I've been really fortunate during my career to have coaches who have done that, and certainly that is who we're looking to add into our staff here. Welcome, Don, to the University of Minnesota. Joe Schmidt, Channel 5. Uh, the landscape, landscape has obviously changed in college athletics. Do you have to coach different now, especially with the transfer portal, trying to keep everybody happy and keep everybody here? 
Well, I would, I would answer that question a little bit differently. I would answer it, how, how do I coach? What, what do we, how do we build accountability? And I think that is something that in, in all of our practices, we compete. And so when we have our, our workouts, there's a number system. And so our young ladies will compete against themselves and they'll compete from one day to the next day to continue getting better. And so that's, that competitiveness then typically carries over into games. And then when and and then after that happens, now you find a new challenge and a new way to go about doing that. And so, you know, I, I think ultimately, uh, but this is the the reason this happened as fast as it did is because, as Mark mentioned, we have young ladies who there's there's an this is this is an anxious time for them. And so it's important that there we have an opportunity to build a a connection and continue to grow. And so uh, I think that's something that's really important for us moving forward. Don, Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. Welcome to Minneapolis. Thank you. The conference looks pretty different from the last time you were in it. I think 2012, there were two Big Ten teams that finished in the top 25. As you look forward to the next five years, what is going to differentiate the Minnesota women's basketball program from the rest of the conference, especially as UCLA and USC come into the fold? All right. I, th I think certainly when you're in a conference and the competition is really strong at a very high level, and certainly the Big Ten is at that level, you can look at it one of two ways, and you can say, and I wish it wasn't quite that good right now because then we can make up ground a little bit faster. Or you can look at it and you can say, good, it's pretty good right now. So once we learn how to compete, that means we're going to have a chance to be at, at a level where, where we're doing some special things too. And so we're going to choose the second way to look at that and say, we, we have an opportunity to grow and compete in one of the best conferences in the nation right now. And we're watching that as we're going through the, the NCAA tournament. And so, you know, we're excited about it. We're excited about the challenges. You have a very extensive coaching resume. Uh, Are you saying I'm old? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what that meant? <laughs> um, I mean, but last year with West Virginia was your first time in a Power Five as a head coach. I was wondering if that changed any way, in, in any way the way you kind of approach things and, and I guess what you learned from that experience. Well, I think every opportunity, every every year is an opportunity to learn and to grow. And certainly I believe that that I did that during the course of this year. You know, in terms of it was very different in how we – how, how our games were laid out and the time frame in between and the accessibility to, to recover. And so uh, it, I think it, there's a lot that I learned during the course of the past year that hopefully will help us get better now here. Don, Andy Greeter of St. Paul Pioneer Press. I'm curious in your three tenants, uh, the third one, find a way, how did that come to be <laughs> one of your building books? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I grew up on a farm in in West Bend, Wisconsin. And so I think there's probably a lot of that, that building block that came from that mentality, you know? And, and so my sister and I can attest to this. We did all the work for our brother who really didn't do a lot. I hope he's watching too, just for the record. But there are times that you'd come home from school and you wanna go hang out with your friends. You wanna do all those things, but you have to do the job at hand first. You gotta bale the hay, you've gotta, put it in the barn, you gotta do all those things. And that, so, and sometimes it wasn't convenient, a lot of times it certainly wasn't, but you had to find a way to get it done. And you, a lot of times things would break down and you still had to get it in before the rain would come. And so I think a lot of that is just based upon how I've been raised and that, you know, you just, you have to find a way to do it and get it done. Yeah, Pat Borzy with MinPost.com again. Is there a team playing in the NCAA tournament right now that plays a style that's similar to what you want this team to play? <laughs> that's a really good question. I, I, that one's really hard for me to answer because I believe this. You know, when people ask, what is our style? What is our offense going to look like? Uh, ultimately, it depends on our time together and working and growing and putting these young ladies in the best possible situation to be successful. So whether that's a four out one in motion, whether that's a three out two in, you know, whether it's a, whatever it is, whether that's a, a chin offense that runs into something else that runs into a motion offense, I don't know yet. It's gonna depend on how we kind of come together and what that looks like. And that's kind of the fun of building all of this together too. So I would say, you know, defensively, I think it's really important that, that we continue to get better on the defensive end, limit opportunities. Everybody wants to run, that's fun. It's fun to play fast. Well, how do you play fast? You gotta get stops. 
it's hard to play fast if you don't get stopped. So you got to be really good on the defensive end first and foremost to be able to get out in transition and make things happen. And then when you're in transition, you want to take care of the basketball because there's nothing worse than you're playing fast, but you're giving it back right back to the other team. And now you got to go back on defense and get another stop. So for us, it's a matter of we need to make sure that we're really good on the defensive end. And then we build into the offense after that. Coach, to be clear, uh, uh, probably rebounding and defense will be foundations of this team, regardless of the style you, went, you ultimately play? Absolutely. I think in order for us, our, our first you know, uh, tenant, I use the word building block, but I kind of like tenant, maybe I have to use that word now. But for, first building block for us is going to be toughness. And toughness, in order for us to be good defensively, you need to finish plays. Whether that means tip a pass and then go, go get on the floor and, and finish it, whether it means save it out of bounds, whether it means finish with a rebound, whatever it looks like, you have, we have to be really good at finishing plays. John Chip Scoggins with the Star Tribune. You mentioned home a couple times. How much does that help you in recruiting, uh, having those connections already so you're not basically starting over? Yeah, it feels great. It, you know, it's been great to reach out to a number of the coaches so far and and to reconnect with them and, and then hear kind of who they have. So it's been that's been really good. It's been really fun for me to, to see some people who have been doing this as long as I have, sometimes even longer than I have. So that, that's been great to be a part of that. And it's, it's very comfortable and it's been a, a great deal of, of uh, being really busy r really early on because I have an opportunity because I have a lot of connections. Uh, Jim Sehan, Star Tribune again. Do you uh, foresee going to the transfer portal to round out this group or would you rather stay young and build with this group? Well, I think it's going to be important for us to get to a roster that we can compete with. And so what from a number standpoint, you know, right now we have, you know, a, a roster that we probably have to add some players from the portal because it, it's ideal to be at 12, 13, 14, 15 players and so something along those lines. And and ideally, you know, to continue for, for us from a, a number standpoint in terms of practicing. You know, it's great to be able to go four on four on four. It's great to be able to go five on five on five. It's great to be able to do those things. And so, yes, I think initially we will have to kind of round out part of our roster that way. Don Chantel with The Athletic. You mentioned that you'll have a practice tomorrow, I believe. That's correct. I'm just curious as someone that's never been a coach, how do you plan a first practice? What is the value in that? And what do you see that maybe you didn't see in the meeting you had with the team? Okay, how do we plan our first practice? I think what's important for our young ladies, what's really important is for them to understand why we're going to do things. So instead of just setting up some cones and we're gonna do some finishing drills and grab a pad, we'll show them some film. We'll show them some film of teams within the Big Ten and how, how they defend things or how we need to defend them. Defense will probably, probably won't be tomorrow, you guys. Just it, It'll be offense tomorrow. You guys will be happy. You will love that. Offense is way more fun to practice at this time of the year. So I said that, but I didn't really mean that. It'll be offense. You know, but then we'll look at maybe how, how in the past our team here at Minnesota has, has attacked a certain type of, of a look defensively. And then we'll look at maybe how teams that I've coached have done that so they can see it, so they understand why they're doing it. And then we'll go out and hopefully we have some – practice guys that can help us simulate some of those things and we can do that. So I think it's it's important for for young ladies to know why we're doing what we're doing rather than we're just going to drive from the top of the key and we're going to get to the basket and we're going to work on different finishes. Real quickly, have you been in touch with the incoming class and what the status is there and uh, any idea on, on what they're thinking? Right. I have had a chance to speak to all but one of them and we're talking later today. Uh, on in talking to one of the young ladies, Dom was a young lady who on Tuesday of this past week went to the NCAA and filled out that release form for that. So I think that is one young lady who is at least, you know, anticipating looking at, at options at this point in time. But from what I've gathered from the others I've talked to, they're all really, really excited to play with these young ladies. They're excited. You know, we're building something around them and they want to be a part of that.
uh, Jim Suhan, Star Tribune. Did, were you looking for somebody who had connections to the Midwest and to Minnesota recruiting when you, you started the search? Yeah, Jim, um, it's good to see you. You know, when, um, you know, I go back a few years ago when Commissioner Delaney was uh, still here at the Big Ten. I had a chance to sit down and talk with him about Minnesota and, and, and how do we build this place the right way. And, and we had a long conversation, and, and uh, I reflected on that conversation. Uh, Chip wrote a pretty good article, and my mom, who's 84, reads you guys, Chip, and she told me I need to read your article. And, and we were, were looking at what we were trying to put in place here. And, and when, we, um, when we looked at the candidates, if you remember when we, when we announced uh, the transition with our program, we talked about this was an attractive job because of our student athletes that we have in place. And we felt like we could go out and we could get a, a head coach who's done it at many different levels. And the fact that she has such strong connections back here is just a huge positive for us in our program as we move forward. Hey, Mark. Uh, Dave Campbell, Associated Press. Uh, kind of piggybacking off that, how important was it for this uh, new, new coach to have a significant amount of head coach experience already? Uh, you know, it, it played a, a part. You know, obviously, um, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, when I was at Syracuse, I had a chance to go to the women's final four with that basketball program. And I talked to our, our senior staff, I talked to our staff and our student athletes. That's addicting to get to that level and to have that opportunity. And, and we felt it was important to find a coach, again, who's won at a high level. Uh, obviously, we saw what she did at South Dakota when she took them to the Sweet 16. Um, I can tell you, I watched a lot of West Virginia basketball the last three weeks and what she did with that program to get them into the NCAA tournament in year one. And so I think those things, again, are very, going to be very positive for our program as we move forward. Mark, uh, Chip Scott, going to start to uh, How concerned were you the fact that she had only been there one year, that was going to be a hurdle for you? Uh, you know, uh, our first conversation, and, and I think Don will, you know, the very first word I said to her was, I left a place after one year. It can be done, and it's hard. And, and you know, you and I have talked about the emotions you kind of go through. And as Don said, uh, you can't control timing, and I know West Virginia meant a lot to her and her family, and she invested a lot in that program. They invested a lot in her, but uh, again, that was our very first conversation. Uh, we talked about that and what it was like for me and my family to go through that transition, so I think we found some common ground, uh, but again, we're just elated to have her here and be a part of our program. And Mark, what are your expectations here in the short term? I mean, you have, you have talent, and now you have a very experienced coach. What do you expect out of that? You know, Jim, I, I think it's the same expectation we have for all of our teams. You know, again, if you, uh, it's not very Minnesotan to talk about these things, but if you take a step back, and if you look at our whole athletic program in totality, uh, you know, we have one of the highest public-rated schools in the country with academic success. I think our GPA for our student athletes is over 3-2, which is unheard of. And it's all of our teams doing great things. If you look in the Director's Cup, every year we're in the top 25, top 30, which means we're finishing in the top 10% nationally. So we have teams that are competing at a high, high level, and there's no reason why our women's basketball team can't do that. And we feel really, really confident that we've got the right coach, we've got the right young ladies here, that our program can start to see some significant success on that side of it. Mark, George, George Schmidt, Channel 5. You made quite a financial commitment, uh, also a six-year commitment. Um, when you do that, is there, is there any doubt at all, or is that just kind of saying the confidence you have and where she can raise this program? Uh, the confidence where she can raise this program. You know, and obviously, you know, again, I, I mentioned President Gable. We're so grateful for her support, our board leadership. You know, we had conversations with them, and if you look at, you know, the salary rank within the Big Ten, the investment that other programs have made, uh, we felt like that was more than a fair investment uh, to attract a coach of Don's caliber, so we feel like we're in a really good spot on that side of it. Mark, uh, Chip, again, you said you watched a lot of West Virginia basketball the last three weeks. What did you see that you liked? Uh, I really liked her. I liked her, uh, her energy and excitement uh, on, the, on the court, and, you know, I, I know when... Uh, you know, I had a chance, I was joking with her yesterday at lunch when I was in Indianapolis for selection week. Uh, between watching all the men's games, I'm watching West Virginia and Oklahoma State play in the Big 12 tournament. A close game, she's upset, but it was a close game, but I'm watching her demeanor because I wanted to see how she would interact because, uh, you know, when we, again, when we went through our transition, when I had a chance to meet with the team, I told them our first priority was going to be somebody who valued the importance of the student-athlete experience, academically, athletically, and socially. And so I had a chance to watch that game. And then uh, Friday, I had a chance to watch her game against Arizona when I was in Des Moines uh, for the men's basketball tournament. I had a chance to watch her game and, and see that as well. So again, uh, just really excited and really thankful that her, her family believed in coming to Minnesota. And I really think we have great, great days in front of this program. 
Mark Andy with the Pioneer Press. Uh, when it comes to NIL, how much are you uh, looking at just funding dollars for NIL? And then when you're presented from, from donors about give to the university or give to the NIL, what, what sort of advice do you have? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, you know Andy, it's, it's a phenomenal question because a year ago, I couldn't even talk to you about NIL. And, and that's how much it's changed with the NCAA. Now we can start to talk about NIL. And as you know, Jeremiah Carter, who uh, heads up our compliance department, we're transitioning him into a full-time NIL position with our athletic department. He will work closely with Dinkytown Athletes, our, our collective. Uh, that is a broad-based collective that is focused on all of our programs. Uh, and we're also in the process of hiring a fundraiser uh, for Dinkytown Athletes that will help fundraising efforts. And, and uh, Dusty Clements, Randy Handel, our Golden Gopher Fund, have done a wonderful job as we try to educate our donors. But, but if you take a look at our program right now and you look at the facilities we have, uh, we have a lot. We're very, very fortunate. We're very blessed. Uh, NIL is the game changer. And, and when we talk to coaches, Don and I have had lots of conversations. Um, we encourage our donors to look at NIL to see the impact it has. We have very talented student athletes here. Uh, people reach out to them all the time, and we want to make sure that we maximize those, those NIL opportunities for our student athletes. So it's us to continue to educate our donors on the importance of helping out on that side of it as well. Yeah, Pat Borzi with MinPost.com. The volleyball hire aside, a lot of the hires that you've made are people who are from the Midwest, like you. What is it about um, the Midwest background that you think makes these folks a good fit here? Yeah, well, you know, um, what I've learned in here, when I, when I came back, I, I think I remember when I was hired, you, you, you all said I'm almost one of you. And I had no idea what that meant. But, you know, Minnesota has a very unique culture, right? And, and the Midwest has a unique culture. And, and uh, you know, I, I think uh, what attracted us to Minnesota was the Big Ten Conference. You know, as Don talked about, selfishly, I feel like we're in the best conference in America. Uh, I give Norwood, I give Beth a lot of credit when they came up with Athletes Village, uh, our Golden Gopher Fund, who's raised all this money for these great facilities. We've talked about the academic success of this institution. Everything is in place here, Pat. And, and what I like about the Midwest is people don't freak out when it snows. I mean, we, we joke about that and we tell people all the time, I, I have a chance if I'm in town, I meet with all the recruits. And, and, and I think one of our strengths as a department is that we want to live in truth always. We always want to be truthful with people. And we tell recruits, it's going to snow here. That happens. But again, it's a mindset, and, and you embrace it. It's that toughness. Dawn talked about that. So again, uh, I think when we look at Midwest people, uh, they, they understand what they're getting into here in Minnesota. They understand the state. They understand the Midwest. And again, you know, I go back to Chip's article. Chip talked about the Big Ten being cutthroat. I mean, it is a hard, hard league. Every night you have to compete, and I think those Midwestern attitude of roll up your sleeves, blue collar work ethic goes a long way here. Thank you.